Ooh, what's up, nerds and geeks? My name is OMG WTF LOL FTW BRB. Welcome back to more Total Extreme Wrestling 2016. We are playing as the WWF in the year 2001. More importantly, we are booking the Invasion Angle, and we are going to be running Monday Night Raw as we book towards Unforgiven, our next pay-per-view. Alright, so we had a couple locker room incidents, but we also had a couple pre-show matches that I did not want you guys to see due to some spoilers that I'm sure a lot of you by now probably know about, maybe, who knows. Uh, either way, we did have a locker room incident. Uh, Dave Hebner, who is one of our, I think, road agents, the referee to Earl, or excuse me, the brother, not the referee to Earl Hebner, uh, he has heat with the locker room for his selfish behavior, so we gave him a stern warning, but nothing really of note happened to that. And we go on to start off the show, it gets a A-star rating, nerds and geeks. So we start off Monday Night Raw with an A-star. It opens up with uh, Triple H and Stephanie McMahon Helmsley. They're making their way down to the ring while King and JR talk about last week's number one contendership match between Rock, Jericho, and Triple H. Once in the ring, the game takes the mic and he says, <clears throat> Excuse me, hold on. Foley! Foley! I know you're here, damn it. Last week I was screwed. Last week I had that match won until that Texas snake cost me my match. Now I demand you come out here and you put me in that damn title match right now before I come back there and make you do it. But instead of getting Mick Foley, Chris Jericho's music hits and out comes the Ayatollah of Rock and Rolla with a mic in his hand. And he says, Hunter, 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 would you please... Shut the hell up! You know, all your whining has given me a headache, Hunter. Plus, not to mention your nose is so big, we can hear you breathing all the way in China. It's bad enough we have to listen to you complain, but to come out here and demand a title match when your shoulders were pinned to the map for the three last week? If anyone should be added to that title match, it's me, Junior. And then that's when, uh, Chick... I almost said triple, or, I don't know, I was going to combine Jericho and Triple H somehow, I, I don't even know how I was going to do it, or, I can't repeat it. Either way, Jericho and Triple H, they begin to argue back and forth, defending their, you know, why they should get it. Triple H talks more about how Rhino, I, I you know, I had Austin beat, Rhino got me, you know, involved, and then I had you guys beat last week, I pedigreed your ass, had you beat, and then Austin got involved. Jericho talks about, yeah, well, your shoulders got pinned in my dinner, yada, yada, yada. That's when Commissioner Foley's music hits, and out he comes, and he says, Jericho, honor. That was horrible. Jericho, honor. Please. You both lost last week. It doesn't matter if your shoulders weren't pinned to the mat, or if your shoulders were. You both lost. Out of the story. Rock his face in Austin at Unforgiven. And then Mick Foley turns to go and leave, and Triple H says, Don't you turn your back on me, Foley. I was screwed last week, just like I was screwed at King of the Ring. Don't make me break your jaw again. You put me in that damn match. And a full, you know, taken a little, uh, taken a little back by Triple H's threats, you know, got off little golf guard. Uh, now, I don't want to make it seem like he backed down, but Foley, he does this kind of a little bit out of spite. He says, all right, Hunter, you want another match? Shot in the match? Fine, I'll give you your shot. You can face Rock and Austin at Unforgiven if you beat Jericho tonight. But if Jericho wins, then he will face Rock and Austin, and you won't have any more excuses. Have a nice day, gentlemen. And that sets up our main event, similar to what we had last week, except this week, instead of it being a triple threat match, it's just a one-on-one -on -one match, as Jericho, the man who wasn't pinned in the match last week, takes on Triple H, the man who was pinned, but has a legitimate argument considering that Rhino got involved in his pay-per-view match. So like I said, Mick Foley not really giving Triple H the match because, you know, he earned it or he's afraid he's going to break his jaw, more because he looks at it more like, you know what, Triple H, if you can beat Jericho tonight, then fine, whatever. You get your damn match, you have your point. But if Jericho wins, you won't have any more excuses. You lost twice in a week, so there you go. Uh, got the show off to a strong start, got the crowd hotter, Triple H was good. No worker improvements, and we are not turning Jericho quite yet. A-star, what a hell of a way to start off the show. That leads us into a B-plus rating, coming back from our commercial break, and my buddy Chris didn't think this would do well. B-plus rating, coming back from commercial, Raven uh, standing in the ring with a cart full of fun. You know, Raven, back in the day, he used to always have a shopping cart full of all sorts of weapons, some, uh, you know, 
some more well known like steel chairs, you know, stuff like that, and then other stuff a little bit, a little not more stuff you can find at the Goodwill maybe, stuff like that. Either way, he has a mic in his hand. And he says, "Ron, Ron Simmons, you know I've been gone for a little while now, and in my absence, I see you've captured my title. But Ron, you don't get to walk around with the with the king's crown when you're not the king of hardcore. Ron Simmons, if you're as badass as you say you are." then you'll come out here and give me my crown back. Don't make me come out there or come back there and have to find you myself. But he doesn't have to because Ron Simmons' music hits. Out comes the WWF Hardcore Champion. And he says, Raven, you ought to be the craziest white boy I've ever met. Coming out here looking like a band member from Korn, challenging a legend of my stature. Boy, I'm going to make you eat your words and send your ass back on the injury reserve. You're on. And that sets up our opening match of the night, which will be for the WWF Hardcore Championship, as Raven, representing the WWF, will battle Ron Simmons. It got the crowd hotter, introduced Raven back to TV, and we move on to the segment, which goes a B plus. hell yeah! And my buddy Chris said that he didn't know if they can do it. B-plus rating, and a decent match, Ron Simmons goes on to defeat Raven in 9 minutes, 44 seconds, with the Dominator, making his fourth defense of the Hardcore Championship Simmons had the B rating, Raven had a B minus, no worker improvements, this was our wild brawl match of the night, out of curiosity, I would like to see why this just did so pretty good, Raven was well suited for a, a wild brawl type match, I guess, still, good job guys, B plus, I think that did better than their pre-show match, which got a B, so, good on you guys, B plus, that, that far away from an A, hell yeah. We then move on to our next segment, which gets a, another B plus rating, hell yeah, I changed the Hardy Boys pictures, by the way, to match more of the current era we're in. We get a B-plus rating. Backstage, we see The Undertaker. He's getting ready for his matchup later on tonight. And six-man action as he will team with the Hardy Boys to take on the Giant and the Steiner Brothers. Then we hear a knocking on the door, and Taker says, Come in and enter the Hardy Boys, Hardy Boys, Matt and Jeff. And Matt says, Hey, man, look, we just want to thank you. But before you continue, The Undertaker interrupts and says, Save your thank yous. I'm tired of these WCW punks coming here, coming here week in and week out and running their mouths. Look, tonight is simple. You guys handle the Stutter Brothers, and I'll handle that big nasty giant bastard. And then Taker, you know, just goes to walk away, leaving both the Hardys there and Matt and Jeff look at each other, and they just kind of shake their hands, agreeing, setting up, you know, a little promo here, kind of touching on what we had last week, so on and so forth. Undertaker was the real star in this segment. Nothing else to really point out here. No worker improvements either. We then go to a, another segment. This was a during the commercial break, so I presume we're coming back from a commercial break here, and we're just showing what happened during the commercial break. We get a solid B rating. We see Raven. He's getting iced up after having a hardcore title match against Ron Simmons earlier when Paul Heyman approaches him. Paul Heyman made his TV return on Nitro last week, so he makes his Raw return, I guess, tonight. As he walks up to Raven, he says, Raven, I've got to say, what a match. I mean... You didn't win, but Ron Simmons is one tough son of a bitch, and you took the fight right to him. And that's when Raven looks up, he throws his ice pack down on the table, and he says, What do you want, Polly?" And then Heyman says, I just want to talk. You know, I can see now, maybe not, maybe not the best time, it's not a good time. So, you know what, here's my card. You just give me a call. And he leaves his card there while Raven looks at it, and Paul Heyman walks away to end the segment, leading to our next segment, which gets a solid B rating, and a rematch from last week in kind of a revenge match from um, Nitro. I'd imagine maybe a little bit of a video package playing before this, you know, or maybe the announcers playing up why this match is happening. But um, on Nitro, during the King of the Ring, or Chris Benoit's King of the Ring inauguration, Edge interrupted and went for a spear on the King of the Ring. But William Regal pushed, or excuse me, not William Regal, Lord Stephen Regal pushed um, Benoit out of the way and eating the spear for him. So he thus had this match take place tonight, getting his bodyguards to take on Edge and his partner slash brother to get a little bit of revenge. But also, like I said, it's a rematch from last week, considering that these two battled over the number one contendership for the WF tie or tag team titles. So we have a decent match here. Edge and Christian go on to defeat Power Plant in 9 minutes, 59 seconds, when Sean Stasiak was disqualified after we had Lord Steven Regal come in and attack Edge. So I'd imagine maybe Edge and Christian, Edge going for the spear or something. Regal comes in and just grabs Edge's leg or does something, leading to the DQ, and then leading to a three-on-two beatdown from Power Plan and Regal 
on Edge and Christian, but we'll touch on that in the next segment. Uh, Regal doing good work ringside as always. Stasiak was off his game, unfortunately. Uh, what do we have here? Edge came out of the match looking good. Christian with a B plus. Edge with an A. Uh, both Stasiak and Jindrak with a C. Makes me wonder if uh, Stasiak was actually in this match. How the hell... Oh, wait, because Christian. Duh. I was about to say, how the hell did the Edge and Benoit storyline even get progressed in this? But I forgot. Edge and Christian. Um, makes me wonder. Stasiak wasn't off his game. Would he have been better than Mark Jindrak? Hmm. Whatever. Solid B rating. We then go to our next segment, which gets a solid B rating as well. Uh, this is just a freestyle segment because I can just explain it to you. Regal and Power Plant are continuing the beatdown on Edge and Christian, looking to take out the two brothers. And that's when the Tag Team Champions music hits. Test and Albert, along with Trish Stratus, come racing down to the ring and go to, you know, go to take the fight to Power Plant. But Regal, being the smart man here and getting Power Plant out of the ring before the Tag Team Champions get in the ring, abandoning the, you know, the whole thing while TNA check on Edge and Christian, pretty much begging, you know, Jindr Jindrak and Stasiak to get back in the ring. Unfortunately, Sean, St Sean Stasiak was underwhelming, and it, but it did gain heat for the TNA power plant feud, so you got that going for it. We then go to another segment, which gets an A star. Hell yeah, you gotta love The Rock. And uh, Michael Cole, he's backstage with The Rock, and he says, Ladies and gentlemen, my guest at this time, The Rock. Now Rock, but before he can continue, Rock puts his hand over to Mike, and he says, Shh, just leave, Michael Cole. The Rock's got this. Cole leaves, and then Rock says, Finally, The Rock has come back to the Northwest. Now, Michael Cole was going to ask The Rock his reaction to finding out that his once one-on-one -on -one match with Stone Cold Steve Austin at Unforgiven is now going to be a triple threat match, and The Rock won't lie. The Rock's a little pissed. But it doesn't matter if it's Triple H, it doesn't matter if it's Chris Jericho, and it doesn't matter if it's Chris Jericho and Triple H's weird inbred love babies. Because the only thing that matters is come Unforgiven, The Rock is going to march down to that ring. He's going to look stone cold in his big bald head. He's going to get the look at Triple H in, the big no, in his big nose or Chris Jericho in his greasy here. And he's going to whoop their candy asses and walk out the new seven-time WWF champion. Now if you smell what The Rock is cooking. So just pretty much generic promo on The Rock covering that uh, now, instead of it just being him and Austin, it'll be either him, Austin, and Triple H, or him, Austin, and Jericho. It did gain heat for the Triple H and Stone Cold feud. Rock and Jericho just moved on. Nothing else really to talk about of this. We then go to a solid B rating here, and we're backstage with Edge and Christian, and Edge has a message for Regal, and he says, Regal, if you and your merry men want to jump me, make sure you finish the job. You took a spear for Benoit on Nitro. Very honorable, but very stupid. And now you're mad at me for a decision you made? Also very stupid. But I'm going to follow my own advice when I finish you this Thursday on Nitro. And uh, pretty much just a con confirmation right there that on Nitro this week... Where the hell is Nitro? Oh, that's right. It's WCW, so it's like the last one. So WC... It's before it. That's right. It's, I always forget that. Before. not What am I thinking? I'm dumb. That confirms that this week on Nitro, we will indeed see Edge battle the commissioner, Lord Steven Regal, on Nitro this week. So let's go ahead and just confirm that, book it in. Bada boom, there we go. Christian underperformed, unfortunately, but what can you do? Moving on to the next segment, we go to a solid C rating. This is just another freestyle segment. Uh, Lita, you know, of course... Heading out with Matt and Jeff for the six-man tag match, but she tells Matt or someone, or you know, most likely Matt because it's her boyfriend, tells him, "Oh, I forgot something in the locker room. I'll be, I'll catch up with you guys or something." And that's when Jacqueline takes advantage of it and she beats down on Lita, calling her a fraud champion, saying she, she, her victory was a fluke. Not, not all that's pretty much all that jazz. Jacqueline is still pissed that you know. Lita beat her, but not only beat her, but beat her with like just a quick roll-up. So she pretty much just says, you didn't beat me, you just pinned me, pretty much stuff like that. Solid C rating. Jacqueline showing that this uh, her and Lita aren't quite through yet. And it gained heat for the rivalry, so you can't complain there. But that also means that Lita was taken out, so she won't be there for the Hardy Boys tonight. As we move into our six-man tag match, which gets a solid B rating. 
and a bout that had great wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. The Giant and the Steiner brothers defeating The Undertaker and the Hardy Boys when Scott Steiner defeated Jeff Hardy with the Frankensteiner. Uh, Rick Steiner, unfortunately, still the weak link, but that's okay. I'd imagine happening in this match at one point, Undertaker and Giant just start brawling until they brawl all the way up to the back, leaving it just to be now a normal tag match between Hardys and the Steiners at one point, and that leads to the Steiners getting the victory. Unfortunately, Jeff Hardy was really off his game. That's a shame. Uh, not enough selling either. That's a shame. Jeff Hardy with the B rating, so not too shabby. Matt with a B rating. Taker with that A star shining bright here. Uh, Steiner, Rick Steiner, I should say, with a C plus, so he was the weak link here. And both Scott and Giant. Oh, excuse me, Giant with an A star rating. Never mind. Scott Steiner, on the other hand, had himself an A rating. I also made this a wild brawl match, I guess. It did lose heat for the Giant and Undertaker storyline, but we'll gain that back sooner or later. Scott's improving in Rumble, Matt's improving in Rumble, and the Giant is improving in Rumble. Everybody improving here. That leads us to our next segment, which gets a B-plus rating. The match is over. Uh, we have Taker and Giant. They're nowhere to be seen, so Scott and Rick look to eliminate the Hardys once and for all, blocking both of them into the Steiner recliner. Scott has it in on Jeff. Rick has it in on Matt. They're not letting go. We got road agents. We got referees trying to pull the hold off, but Rick and Scott are just too strong. They can't pull off the holds on both the Hardy Boys, and that's when the fireworks hit the stage, the Dudley Boys music hits, and out comes Bubba Ray, out comes Devon, out come the Dudleys, come racing down to the ring. Steiner Brothers, they let go of their holds, and they go to swing at the Dudleys once they get in the ring, but both Bubba and Devon duck, and they, you know, land a couple punch back in the Steiners off the ropes, and then clothesline them over the ropes, sending the Steiners back. Rick, you know, holding Scott back, because Scott's a little bit of a, you know... Crazy person, and Scott finally calms down. He goes, you know what? You guys aren't worth our time anyway. You're not worth our time. Stuff like that while the Dudleys are kind of similar to the TNA angle earlier tonight where they're just kind of begging the Steiners or back into the ring. So uh, Scott Steiner came across well, as did Jeff Hardy, but Devon, unfortunately, unperformed. But that does start our next storyline, which will be the Steiner brothers and the Dudley boys taking each other on for the WCW tag team titles, most likely. B-plus, not a bad way to start that angle, by the way. We go to a, another B-plus rating, another freestyle, just because I can explain it myself. This is another during the commercial break, just showing that The Undertaker and Giant did continue the brawl, even when the cameras weren't on them in the backstage area as the cameras caught up to him and showed the brawl for the crowd to see, leading to eventually the parking lot. I'd imagine them, you know, hitting each other with various types of weapons, maybe some, un, you know, unlikely weapons like food, maybe slamming them into the vending machine and it breaking so on and so forth. It eventually leads into the parking lot where big, where the Giant managed to get away somehow and then gets away in his monster truck because what else would a guy named the Giant drive? He's got to have a monster tuck, truck. And he drives off, leading him to the dead man there, just watching the Giant and pretty much making his last little word saying, I'll see you ass soon or whatever. I'll see you ass in hell. Stuff like that. Undertaker looked good. Giant looked good. Storyline advanced. Deserve better color commentary, but what can you do? Still a good segment if you ask me. That leads us into our next segment, which gets a C-plus rating. We got Michael Cole, and he says, Ladies and gentlemen, my guest at this time, Bubba Ray and Devon, the Dudley Boys. Now, guys, what exactly did we see back there? As soon as they're about to talk, though, that's when Paul Heyman walks in the shot, and he says, Excuse me, Cole. Do you mind if I interrupt for a second and borrow the Dudleys? Bubba, Devon, I, I hope you don't mind. I'd actually like to have a word with both of you real quick, if you don't mind. That's when, you know, Bubba and Devon look at each other and they nod and then they got to just walk away from Cole and walk away with Paul Heyman as uh, we presume Heyman's going to, my voice just cracked there, I'm sorry, Heyman's going to have a little talk with them like he wanted to do with Raven earlier. Not getting a better rating though, unfortunately. I blame you, Cole. We then go to an A rating. Hell yeah, Paul Heyman, working quick here. This is probably in between commercial breaks or something. So, A rating, we're backstage, we're with the WWF champion and Stone Cold, or Stone Cold Steve Austin and his protege, Rhino, and Austin says, Now, Rhino, the key to being a good champion is to be ready for anything, and tonight is a good example of that. You see, going into Raw, we thought it was just the Rock at Unforgiven, but now it'll be a three-way with either Jericho or Triple H. Key, too, to being a good champion is to scout your opponents at all times which is why we're going down there again and joining King and good old JR to watch the match. What the hell do you want? 
And that's when we see Paul Heyman. He says, oh, excuse me, Mr. Austin. I was actually just hoping to um, talk to Rhino real quick. And then Austin replies, Rhino don't want to talk to you. Now get the hell out of here. Better yet, come on, Rhino, let's get out of here. We got a match. And then Rhino leaves with Austin, but not before looking back and just kind of looking at Heyman before leaving with uh, his mentor. It did lose heat for the Triple H segment, but it's got an A rating. So what can you do? And Heyman invented a new catchphrase. I don't know if it would be, can I just talk to him real quick? But he did invent a new catchphrase, which will likely boost his his ability on the microphone. Good for Paul Heyman. Austin was fantastic. Good all around. We go into our main event of the night, which gets a solid two weeks in a row. Solid. Mwah. A rating, nerds and geeks. In an exceptional match, Chris Jericho goes on to defeat Triple H in 14 minutes, 57 seconds, with a distraction from Stone Cold Steve Austin. So there you have that. Jericho beats Triple H, and that confirms that at Unforgiven, it won't be Rock versus Austin in a one-on-one match, but indeed, we will have ourselves a triple threat match for the WWF Championship as Stone Cold Steve Austin will defend his WWF Championship against The Rock and Chris Jericho. So let's go ahead and book that in now. Championship match. Bada boom. There we go. Great matchup from, from these two. This was our storytelling match of the night. I also have them call it in the ring because I think Jericho has like a 99 psychology and Triple H is like a 91. So they definitely can do it. Uh, Jericho still foreshadowing that heel turn. Jericho and Triple H both with that solid A rating in the in-ring performance. No worker improvements and we're not turning Jericho quite yet. As we move on to our closing segment of the night, another solid, mwah, solid A rating segment. Again, just a freestyle segment because I figured I can just ignore, you know, spell it out for you guys myself. Similar to what happened last week, Chris Jericho is celebrating in the ring when Austin gets up on the apron and you know he's talking to Jericho, kind of distracting him. And that's when we see a Rhino in the corner of our eyes as Rhino goes rushing right towards Jericho to hit him with the gore. But Jericho moves out of the way, and Rhino goes running right into the, you know, the steel post, pretty much, or the, like right into the turnbuckle. So Jericho avoids the gore, but he turns around, and there's Austin standing right in the middle of the ring, who hits him in the gut, kicks him right in the gut, hits the stunner, takes him down. Jericho's laid out. Triple H is already, you know, out of the ring. Stephanie's gotten, you know, pulled him out, and they're they're going. So Jericho gets laid out by Rhino and Austin, and the mentor protege pair ends Raw once again, standing tall, drinking beer as one of Austin's opponents lay in the ring, similar to how The Rock was last week. So, of course, it did need better announcing, but that's to be expected when Austin's just so great. Jericho was a real star in this segment, and Austin was fantastic. No, not yet. We end off the show. Holy hell, Christian! My buddy Chris said we were going to get another perfect show. I... I didn't believe him. I didn't think this was perfect show material, but I didn't think last show was perfect show material. But it did it again, nerds and geeks. Holy hell. A star rating for the show. My second perfect show ever. And it's two weeks in a row for Monday Night Raw. Making Raw must-see TV, pretty much. WWF is must-see TV. Nitro's getting A ratings. Raw's getting A star ratings. People are into this. I'm into this. Hell yeah. A star? Hell yes. Oh, man. I don't think I'm going to cover it. I don't want to cover it. It's a controversial topic. I don't... We already know in real life what happened. We already know, you know, after it happened, WWF made history by having, you know, the... What's it called? The, um first live, you know, Nitro or SmackDown was aired, the first show after, you know, live or something, new show, I don't know if I forget what it was, after, you know, the 9-11 attacks, I'm not going to talk about it, we already know Nitro's going to be, I don't think I'm going to make a big deal about it unless you guys would like me to make a quick little angle like a 10-toll bowl, 10-toll bell or whatever that you call it, I don't want to talk much about it, it's like I said, it's a toppy subject, 
or we'll just we'll just talk. You mentioned it right here, as you can see in the headline news. I knew it was going to happen because you know it's in 2001. Either way, uh, the United States has been rocked by devastating attacks, which have destroyed the World Trade Centers in New York and seriously damaged the Pentagon in Washington. Thousands are feared to have died inside the buildings when the hijacked airliner slammed into them. No one has said they were responsible for the attack, but U.S. officials have pointed the finger to Saudi dissent. Osama bin Laden, an Islamic militant, President Bush, who has cut short a visit in Florida on hearing the news, said the U.S. would hunt down and punish those responsible. Again, I don't think I'm going to talk about it that much, guys. I knew it was going to happen, but let's not let that ruin that. Just, you know what I mean? No, no reason to really talk much about that. It's sad. Either way, credible, absolute success. Uh, New Japan, I think this is the first time I've ever seen them actually sign someone. They got Shinya Hashimoto. Good for them. Perry Saturn's back at 100%. Good for him. And, yeah. Rhino's got an opinion? What? Rhino, you're a little, you're a little young for me to be taking opinions on. Does Rhino have an issue with Bubba Ray Dudley here? Rhino says, Bubba Ray Dudley doesn't connect with the fans, in my opinion. He has little upside. Is he shooting? Is Rhino shooting? Rock, on the other hand, says, Devon Dudley's pretty good in the ring. You should push him. Is Bubba shooting right now? Bubba? Don't you be salty, my man. Or not Bubba. Rhino. Don't be salty. Either way. Let me look at all our storylines here. Check how they're all doing. Nothing with the Nay star, unfortunately, like I was hoping. Still, we're doing good. I would like to do a quick little auto push, though. And I want to see something. Where's Rhino at? Where's my boy? Still in that upper mid card region. Okay. I just wanted to see if Rhino was all of a sudden the main eventer, if he's getting mouthy with us, trying to get us to, you know, hate on Bubba Ray Dudley all of a sudden. Either way, nerds and geeks. Hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. I know I have. A perfect show, two weeks in a row? Hell yeah. You know what? Can we tell on here? Is it, is it going to be weird? Ah, yeah, see, it's going to be weird. It doesn't tell us which week, which is something they should change. That way you can tell which show is technically the best. But uh, I guess we can... That's our best... I thought... I didn't, I didn't know that overtook that, but apparently Rock, Triple H, and Jericho... Is considered the best match now instead of Austin just in Triple H at SummerSlam. Good on him. I'm going to assume last week's show is better than though, since this is our number one match and this is number five. But I don't, I don't know if there's a way to tell, to be honest, because the top 100 doesn't really show us. Either way, nerds and geeks, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you have, do me a favor, leave me a comment, like, and subscribe if you have not already. And as always, my name has been OMG WTF Elbow FTW BRB, and I will see you, nerds and geeks. For Nitro. But until then, have a wonderful day.